I'm Austin Luby. I'm Andrew Harp. This is With Nothing to Say. Let's talk about delicatessen. Before we get started today, just a quick shout out to our friends at Film Guff. This is a really incredible, interesting, funny podcast. It's a bunch of people talking about lowbrow talk about low rent movies. These are kind of uh, lesser known indie, small independent, you know, often just silly, absurd, ridiculous movies. Most of these movies I'd never even heard of before. It's a fun time. Go give them a listen on podcasts or wherever you hear your podcasts. So, yeah, this week we watched uh, the 1991 French film Delicatessen uh directed by Mark Caro and Jean-Pierre Cheyunet sure I've seen this movie you haven't seen it I picked it because it's kind of food related for you know the month of November Jean-Pierre Cheyunet like people are probably somewhat familiar with him he directed uh Amelie Emily uh the French film good film it uh, I haven't seen the movie since high school though sort of different territory they he and Caro they have like an interesting style that we'll get into, but so Delicatessen is a post-apocalyptic film that all takes place in one single apartment complex. It's about basically a group of tenants that live at this apartment complex, and the butcher who owns the apartment building also murders people to eat them. It's kind of has like a Sweeney Todd sort of feel to it, but also Post, I mean, I guess Sweeney Todd is pretty dark in itself, but it's also post-apocalyptic. So, you know, there's not a lot of food and it's very, has this very surreal sense to which all of the director's films, even like Amelie, even though it's like pretty based in the real world, they all have this kind of surreal feel to it. And this is certainly uh, a film of absurdism. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And Sweeney Todd, they just live in like London in the 1800s, which is why it's so like dark and dingy and awful. But yeah, and here it's like, yeah, it's like a post-apocalyptic like France. And, you know, like you said, they live in an apartment building and it's clearly like, you know, like out, like out of the city, like it's like in a village, but like <clears throat> everything in the village or the town is like destroyed, except basically for the apartment building and everyone lives there and they don't ever leave. And uh, again, the movie kind of introduces you to the concept of what you just described, where you have like this tenant and he lives upstairs and he appears very scared and the butcher's like, you know, sharpening his knives and he he's like has like trash all over him and you see it because he's trying to disguise himself in a trash can so that he can be like dumped into a garbage truck and be taken away because he can't run away he's about to get away but then the butcher like throws a cigarette in the trash and he like makes like a noise and then it's cool you know it's like from the perspective of the guy in the trash can him being picked up uh like you can only see like his reaction and you but you can hear that he's like being put back inside and he's like super scared the landlord and the butcher, he opens it up, uh, Clapet, I think is his name, and then he kills him. And then, you know, in the next day, it's everybody is uh, 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 buying meat <laughs> uh, with corn, uh, which I think is basically the only currency, uh, like corn and legumes are the only currency in this post-apocalyptic world. It's some sort of, I mean, it's basically like a barter system, but corn seems to be the thing that people want the most, which, I mean, yeah, you would trade with food and the like but it's also like they're in this post select like he doesn't do anything i mean we'll get into this later and i, I know it's kind of purposeful but like he never does anything with the corn the corn's just kind of i guess like what, what do you do with money it just kind of sits there it doesn't have any actual value so in, in that way it doesn't but whatever but i, I do love the opening scene because it's it's entirely it's not silent i think one of the ways you could you could describe this film almost as musical adjacent right because the directors are very yes. in sound and honestly there's not a ton of dialogue in this film it's very dialogue light i mean it's not as like dialogue light as say uh jack to t film but it's certainly leaning much more towards a jack to t film than say a paul schrader film like it's much more interested in the visuals and the sounds that is in the dialogue itself and that whole open sequence is entirely i mean there's not a single line of dialogue there like it's just all visuals which makes it a little confusing because it is sort of vague and surreal and weird i mean you catch on obviously to what's going on but it does kind of take some time to kind of get into it because his visuals are so unique and everything is so 
I mean, this doesn't have to do with that, but everything's so yellow. Like, it's a very yellow film. Yeah, it's a very, like, sickly, kind of gross yellow tone, which Amelie's kind of the same way. It kind of has, like I said, like, it seems like his movies kind of have, like, this kind of, you know, look to it. And, yeah, like, Delicatessen has this, it's very, very yellow. But I don't know. I, I think it kind of works well. You know, everyone's, like, upset and angry and, like, hungry. And, you know, when you're really hungry, you're really sick. Um, so I can kind of understand like the yellowy kind of look. Yeah, it produces kind of like a sickly feeling. Anyway, yeah, he dies, uh, the 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 uh, last guy, and you get basically our um, our uh, protagonist. He arrives like in a car. Uh, Louison he goes up to the butcher and he's like, "Yo, look, I saw that you posted an ad in the Hard Times, which is like a newspaper in the city, to be like a worker there. So it's kind of like you know, like the butcher is like." using like ads to like lure in people so he can kill them for food uh and he's like i want to you know work and he kind of lives like you know <laughs> he's like i like i love that part of the movie because he's like sizing him up you know because he's like a very skinny man like a skinny small man and he's like oh you can't do the work that i need you to do <laughs> it's pretty funny <laughs> they're just kind of, you know, arguing about, you know, the work and stuff like that. And he's almost pushed a shot aside. And, you know, even Louise on like has to like give up his shoes and stuff to like the car driver. And, you know, he's, everybody's having hard times. And, but eventually the butcher's like, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, you can work here, just odd jobs, things like that. And yeah, he moves into, I think, I think he lives on the top floor. I think that's the idea. Yeah, I think so. Something like that. The structure of the apartment complex is kind of, it's kind of confusing. You can never really tell where anyone. I, I love it though. That's such a good set. Like the whole yeah. like apartment. Oh, yeah. And like, once we get to the end, they really, uh, they really make do of like, it's, uh, <laughs> it's very fun. And uh, yeah, he moves in. And yeah, I think like from there he starts working, right. He's just like, his starts, you know, doing jobs and stuff. I think you might even get the scene where um, one of my favorite scenes is when uh, like the, the butcher has sex with the uh, one woman. Yeah. Which is a great, funny very creative scene that's a really cool scene it's like so the way the scene starts is the butcher basically uses one of the women like she basically has sex with him so she can have a place to live and food and stuff instead of like showing a sex scene they just show yeah like uh the creaking of like spring like the bed. under the bed and then as that starts like you kind of hear the squeak and then you kind of get all these other sounds kind of like jump in and everyone's sort of, they're kind of like falling in line with like the sound of the squeaks. And I think like beyond just the, you know, kind of fun sort of goofy kind of musical number that it is, I think it also kind of expresses the way that the butcher more than just owning the butcher shop, more than owning the delicatessen, more than owning the apartment building, it kind of controls everyone in the apartment complex. I mean, obviously it's not like a, a cult sort of thing, but it's in a sense that, you know, whatever he does, everyone has to file, like they don't have an option. So even in the sense of, you know, he's um, having uh, sex with someone, right? Everyone kind of has to fall in line with that. They're all kind of almost hypnotized by him because they don't have any other choice, right? They're kind of stuck in this dark world. And so, you know, you kind of have to pick, your leaders and even if your leader is this you know guy who murders people that's just kind of how it is but it's a super fun scene and you know it's just musically very interesting and i think it also kind of discusses kind of like the rhythm you know of the apartment building like everyone's like in sync right like everyone is doing to the beat of the springy uh mattress uh they're all doing kind of like their own things you know what i mean and uh yeah i think that just kind of like sets up really well kind of like the order and the uh, the rhythm of the movie and of the apartment building and kind of like the cast and stuff as well so very creative scene the scene isn't not necessarily like a big like plot device or anything like that it's just kind of meant to set up what's going on you know in the apartment building and i think it does that really well so and it's a good way to sort of introduce all the different characters even though you've kind of met them. True. i mean there are a lot of characters in this and i think they do a really good job of kind of so they're all really good. Yeah, yeah. They all have like their own little like quirks and things. They all have their like all wants and desires, and they all have different levels of willingness to you know murder or kill or eat people. Even though obviously they all do it, they all kind of have their own qualms, and they all have okay. different relationships with each other, which is really interesting. You know, Louis on he's like doing work. He's doing a good job too. I think At one point he um he's like doing some work, and uh, he he does like a little like bubble trick for like the two kids that live in the apartment building. The, a woman walks by, which is the butcher's daughter, Julie. 
um, she, they kind of like sort of have a, they have like a quick connection and, you know, she runs upstairs and stuff like that. And from there, you know, that's kind of like the big, you know, part of the movie. It's not the big moment of the movie, but the big thing in the movie where it's like they kind of start to begin their relationship and their romance um, from there. But you get kind of like the next scene, or at least like one of the next scenes where um, uh, she gets a package from her dad, which is, a, that, that's a funny scene where a mailman uh, arrives and he has like a, he has like kind of like a funny conversation too with the butcher where it kind of reveals a little bit about the world. It seems like there's kind of like a, like a kind of like a scapegoat kind of thing going on where like they're like ah oh, the, the the troglodytes they're ruining everything or something like you know it's kind of like a scapegoaty propaganda thing I think like they don't really elaborate on that that's really I think maybe the only thing about the world that you get is like a couple times when the mailman is talking about the city but it's only like a couple times you really don't like know too much about the world yeah it's definitely left under ambiguous circumstances there's like a couple conversations throughout with the mailman and maybe one other person at the very beginning where they kind of talk about like, you know, if things are going to grow, which I guess like, you know, farms and stuff, or like they talk about the city a little bit, but you don't really know much about the world at large, like outside of this apartment complex. I mean, you have never see anything else, right? It, the entire set is just the apartment complex and a little yeah, yeah, yeah. under the right. apartment complex, but you kind of have to just kind of grasp your way through the world. But mm -hmm. I, think, I think in this situation, it works because no, it's really fine. yeah because the world is so surreal and you do feel sort of out of place but all the characters in themselves do feel out of like no one really feels like they're supposed to be there like it just feels weird and awkward so i think it's okay that you know you don't really know yeah. much about the outside world and no one ever and they never leave the apartment building the people that live there they never leave anyway that's a good point the mailman arrives and you know he's like a he's like a, a, one of the antagonists of the movie he's a, he's a scumbag but he arrives with like this little package and um you know being an asshole to louise on and and then uh the the parents of the two kids they like rush out to like take the package because they know it's like food or something and so they're like i have two kids and they get in this big fight and louise on like grabs the package and the mailman reveals of course that he has a gun and you know he like he's like give me the package you know louise on he's like okay here 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 uh, and Julie like tells the mailman to stop and, you know, he's like weird to, and the mailman's like weird to her, you know, and she, he's, you know, disgusting. And they have a conversation like Julie Louise on, they have a conversation, you know, she's like, I'm sorry about that. Like, you should come to my apartment and we can have like, we can try some of these like snacks or whatever. And he's like, okay. He's invited to her house. And I believe this is the same. Well, there's two things that go on kind of simultaneously. He's kind of looking at an old, um, he's like going through like his stuff and he's looking at like an old, like a little bellhop hat and like a red coat so julie wears like these like thick glasses but she wants to look beautiful and that you know beautiful people don't wear glasses so yeah it's true <laughs> so she like practices like she like goes around the whole like her whole apartment with her like glass off like you know counting how many steps there'll be and like moving the chair and doing all these sorts of things she can't blind. see like she's blind yeah. like she's blind as a bat Louise on arrives and they have their little date scene and it's a very great it's a very funny scene uh it's very very like physical comedy you know they 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 arrive and they get to know each other over like tea and like food and stuff Louise on you know reveals that he's like a circus clown and that um you know he used to work in the city and then one day they killed and ate his partner and of course and of course Julie like you know Julie like the thing about Julie is that Julie knows what's going on like she knows that her father like kills and eats people so she is uh so she does not want that to happen to louise on it's evident early on and you know she kind of is like oh my god they like ate him that's fucking crazy yeah and and, and and all the physical comedy stuff with her being blind is really funny like she overfills the tea cups and i love when she breaks the vase he louise is like oh no i broke the vase she's like no don't worry i just buy two of everything oh okay and she like brings in an identical vase that was so funny yeah they connect over music too so she's like yeah i play the cello and he's like oh let me get my instrument and he brings it's like a musical saw and they kind of do like a little duet and then they do this thing that happens all the time in comedies where she comes to confess that she's like you know louise on the truth of the matter is yeah. that you know, yeah. we, uh, we, we murder and eat people and, you know, you're next on the list. And of course, uh, while she's doing this big explanation, he has fallen asleep. Because she had like fed him like, like sleep, like basically like sleepy time tea, pretty much. Like he, he's like dead asleep. She's like, ah, oh, crap. Okay. And she like bleeds him back to his room and 
she like looks around his room and she looks like at a poster um of him like in a like clown makeup and stuff and it turns out that like livingston is a monkey it's like oh okay that kind of makes sense <laughs> and she's like oh okay yeah i love all the the scenes where people are watching tv because the thing about this world is like it's post-apocalyptic and it's sort of in the future but there's also like this sort of steampunk but also like this kind of 1950s kind of feel to it because like everything on the t- like the tv are like these kind of 1950s style like black and white like blurry images and it's hard to like sense, yeah like a sense of time but I, I love like all the things that are happening on tv like they're just these little like uh not game shows really but just like little specials and, and it feels very uh, of the age of like the 40s 50s kind of like the i love lucy kind of age of television yeah yeah definitely it's definitely like second half like first half of like the 20th century like when it happened or something like that yeah yeah they all like watch tv they all have tv still and and like you said, yeah, steampunk is also probably a pretty decent like comparison in some ways. Not entirely, but in a way, for sure. But I do think the you know television kind of plays an important role in the sense that I think one of the reasons everyone watches television is because it's really their only escape from reality, right? They're everyone's con- like the TVs are just like constantly on these in these houses because other than music, like they don't have hobbies, they don't ever leave the apartment complex, they have no communication with the outside world. Like the television is the way to escape and it's a way to just not be a part of the world. So there's a certain they're almost hypnotized by television because they don't like they, they have nothing else to do, like their entire lives because they don't really have jobs either. Like none of them really work other than like the well they all they all kind of have like their own little things like they, they you have the two guys who make like the cow right. noises yeah <laughs> you do have that one couple uh who appear to be very rich yes so they appear to be have a lot they seem to be in well means but it's not really revealed like what they do for work at all people have so they have like jobs and stuff but they never leave their apartment you know they still are like trapped uh in their apartment so yeah like television for them is definitely um probably the best uh, option for them in terms of like yeah escaping or uh killing time i mean it's a very claustrophobic film because if you think about it right yeah they're in the apartment so. complex and then within the apartment complex they're in their like rooms and when it's in their rooms they're watching a box on a screen right so they're like in a box yeah. in a box in a box yeah i really like the the set the butcher approaches um one of the tenants who's the dad the dad lives with his wife, his two kids, but also I think like the mother of his wife, who's an old woman. And he's like, look, your rent is late. You need to like give me your mother-in-law so I can kill an eater. And he's like, man, I don't know. Like, you know, he's like, fuck. Like, uh, okay. So I think you get this kind of like funny, it's almost like a horror movie. It's like a very like horror-ish scene where they kind of concoct this little thing where they throw like a ball of yarn like down the stairs because she's like knitting the grandma he turns a t she he turns the tv off and right away she like wakes up and she's like oh my yarn fell down the stairs and she goes downstairs and she gets the yarn and she gets to the bottom and the butcher like he has like that that, that actor is really good everybody in the movie looks the part too in the movie like everyone just like looks like kind of ugly in in a way you know what i mean like everyone just like really does like like really fit the 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 movie and the kind of like the the tone of it and he looks really scary and ugly and he's like you need to like scream he like he's telling her to like scream or something like that and she does she like sees a spider right yeah <laughs> yeah because he's like holding like a knife above her and he's like trying to be threatening but she's just like staring blankly at him like I don't give a shit but then she sees this yeah so she screams and then like somebody is coming down the stairs so uh, us the audience are thinking like oh my god it's louise on isn't it and then it cuts like the mom's crying the mother the the mother-in-law is crying and she's like oh like they're but they're also getting the meat too (laughs) like they're about to eat like like she's like crying and she's upset and stuff but she's like she's like still holding on to like a chunk of like the mother's meat to eat because they're that hungry like they're that desperate and it turns out that like one of the guys, the, the guys who make the cow noise things, like he had come downstairs and his like he lost his leg. I'm guessing like he expected it to be Louise on. Yeah. But and uh he was like, okay, whatever. And he 
I guess he like, it was just like, I'll take your leg then. I love his like explanation for why he lost his leg. He's like, yeah, he was like super apologetic about it. And it's like not that big of a deal. Like it's fine. They chopped his leg off. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And and Julie at the same time, you know, she's like begging um, her father, you know, you can't do this. Like you can't kill Louise on. I like him a lot. Like, like what you're doing is wrong. And the butcher, you know, he's the antagonist, you know, he's, He's like, no, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and something that's important to mention that we haven't talked about yet, the guy whose legs chopped off, he's in love with a woman who's married to a yeah, yeah. man. And throughout right. the film, the woman, she it's kind of like Harold and Maude in the sense that like she creates these like really elaborate, except I guess she's actually trying to do it. She's these really elaborate suicide attempts, like where like they're like- Because she thinks she's like hearing voices in her head. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. She thinks she's like, like she's hearing, like she's schizophrenic and she, you like hear her, like she hears voices. And so she'll create these like elaborate. Like Rude Goldberg machines where they like, where something, when someone does something, this leads at least to like a, like a mechanism that will kill her in some way. And they get like more and more insane until like the very, very end you have it like, until like, yeah, the very, very end there, she's like trying to kill herself in like 20 different ways, right? Like she has like a bottle of pills, there's a gun pointed at her face, she has like a noose around her thing, and someone just has to do something, like someone just has to open a door, and then like it'll start this like concoction, uh, you know, because like we talked about, she's like, she thinks she's hearing voices, uh, and uh, uh, that's like that part of the movie is very funny. It's very, it's very good. It's like <laughs> in terms of like the side character tenant people, like that one is like very fun. Uh, well, fun in a you know in a dark black comedy kind of way. Yeah, and she and the actress like looks very unusual too. Like everybody in the movie looks very unusual. It's very good. And of course, every time like right before she's about to die, like something happens and like yeah yeah, yeah she's thwarted yeah. yeah her death plans are thwarted every time i think like uh more or less than at this point like julie uh is like she's like desperate you know she wants to save she doesn't know what to do she wants to save louis on and she sees like a newspaper article about the troglodytes she's like okay what is this and it's like a group of vegetarian rebels who live underground she's like desperate so she's like i, I guess i'll go in the sewers and see what's up and she's like walking around the sewers and stuff not knowing what to do and eventually like she like stops and i think like you get that part where like they come out of nowhere <laughs> you know they're like they're like they're like dressed up in like uh like the target dice are like yeah like we said they're like rebels and they kind of have like these big goggles on these hats and like you know like they're wearing like trash bags or like raincoats or something and you know they're like oh what are you doing here are you like a mole like what the hell like you know and she's like look like I have this guy, his name is Louise on. He's, I, I need you to save him. Please help me. Also, my dad has like a lot of corn <clears throat> stashed in his apartment that you can take if you help me do this thing. And they're like, okay, we will do it. <laughs> the troglodyte part is like so unusual. It just like kind of comes out of nowhere. You're like, what are the troglodytes? And then it's revealed to them. And they're like, I don't know. Like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, it just like, it's like very random, but I, I like it. It's like a weird aspect that kind of comes out of nowhere. Yeah, I love the troglodytes. They're just so like simultaneously like very incompetent, but also just like have all these like yeah. weird like gadgets that they use. Like they they think themselves of like these like terrorist rebels, but they're really yeah bad at their job. It's mm -hmm. great. I love it. I love them. Yeah, they're they're fucking awesome. So they agree. They're like, we'll say Louison. We've reached a point now in the movie where I think Capet is ready to kill Louison. Right? I think Julie has been like basically drugging louise on to sleep at night so he's not doing anything like they're not leaving his apartment julie is upset at louise on the other woman who has been having sex with the butcher she like you know she, she likes louise on like he he seems like a pretty nice guy he's a clown he's funny and so she like goes to talk to him and he like does like one of his skits for because like throughout the film he's doing like all these different like clown skits yeah yeah i like the one my favorite one too not to mention them all but my favorite one is the one where she walks in on uh, louise on and like his head is on a table and he is like oh i'm just working on one of my acts <laughs> like that one was really funny <laughs> the, this particular skit he has like three legs so i guess like one of the legs is like a I don't know, like like a fake leg that's a like, to yeah. others. and he does like this little dance and he's like, yeah. playing his guitar and he's like dancing with her and they're dancing back and forth. And of course, Julia walks in at this moment and she's 
scandalized because yeah, she, feels, she can't believe it. She feels heartbroken. Like she goes away and he's like, no, wait, Julie. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And while this is happening, I believe the troglodytes are beginning to sort of invade the begin their ascent, their yeah. ascent which again they're not very good at it like they're, they're pretty bad at their job and so they'll like sneak into different places and one of like as they're like climbing up like some sort of shoot yeah like, it's like very like a mission impossibly you know they're like climbing with like these yeah things. yeah yeah like very toy like it reminds me of that scene in toy story 2 when they do the same thing where they go up the suit with like the suction cup magnet things basically yeah. the same thing that's that was pretty that's pretty funny yeah but yeah they're 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 their hearts in the right place but they're pretty incompetent <laughs> um and at the same time too louis on uh, is on television i think his show is on tv so they're all watching tv um and i think julie like after like a second or whatever is like okay i forgive louis on you know he wasn't doing anything wrong and they're watching tv together and stuff and the struggle dice are coming in and they're watching tv and the signal gets messed up um, I think because the butcher is messing with the television antenna and he's trying to lure him, Louis on up there to like fuck with it. So he goes there and uh, they have like a fight with the witch that Julie comes into to like, you know, stop the fight. But they have a fight because I think Clapet is ready to kill and eat uh, Louis on. Like it's now time. He sure is. I, one of the things that I love, I mean, the fight scenes aren't like very. They're not like super choreographed fight scenes, you know, they're just like kind of like a little back and forth. It's just a tussle, yeah. yeah, yeah. A tussle. But they're fighting with the antenna and so right, right, right. women is is watching television while this is going on. Yeah. She's like, no, 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 just a little more to the right, like a little more to the left. And like, it's like, they're pushing the antenna back and forth. And she's like, oh yeah, 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 that's it right there. Yeah, that's great, that's great, that's great. Yeah, they're able to stop Clephead for a minute. Like he almost falls. I think the reason that he he falls is because, right, or. Uh, one of the women, the one who's been trying to commit suicide this whole time, there's like 20 different things going on. She's like trying to take all these pills. She's got a gun. Oh, yeah. Do it. She's like super prepared. She's got the gas on. She's ready to do it. And yeah. her husband like walks in, attempts a suicide, again, fail. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess depending how you look at it, a like light goes off or like a, a spark or whatever. And the entire apartment just explodes. It's also revealed at that point, too, that like one of the guys has been like, talking to her through the pipes and like trying pretending to be a voice and he gets into a fight with his roommate yeah because i think the guy lo loves her and yeah but it explodes and it like kills them both they both die they fucking die like people in the movie die it's crazy that's the conclusion of those characters and yeah the explosion kind of like causes like i think the butcher to fly back a little bit and they're able to escape um louise and julie they get into his room uh which like i said i think is on the top floor like a high floor um, and, uh, the troglodytes then end up, uh, they're incompetent. Like you said, they go into his room and they set up like a trap and the girl, the woman, uh, who was dancing with her, him earlier, they accidentally catch her. She's in his room and they catch her and they're like, all right, go, 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 go. And they like run into the sewers and they check it up and they're like, all right, we got him. Good job guys. And they open it up and it's like not Louisa at all. And they're like, they like keep arguing about whether or not like it's like a man or a woman or something like that. It's like so ridiculous. And that, that actor is really good too. Like when she like yells and stuff, it's very, very good. Very funny. And they're like, we need to go back. What are we going to do? It's like, well, we got to, got to finish what we started. And uh, I think at this point too, like the, 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 the people know that the troglodytes are in the apartment. And I think they also like end up killing one of their guys too. Like uh, the mailman shows up and he has a gun. And he like shoots one of the troglodyte guys. Very sad. The saddest death in all of cinema history. It's just like, it is kind of sad. It's like, oh, that's not, like, it's not like a main character. It's just like, oh, that kind of like is sad. It's like a war movie, you know, where it's like someone was shot, like the butt, you're the guy's buddy. They're like, we got to go back and get Louise on. Yeah. And, and like I said, at this point, I think Louise on and Julie are barricading in his apartment. Yeah. They're barricading the apartment and basically the entire apartment complex is trying to, cause they're like, we're, we're ready to eat this guy. We're, we're just, yeah, we're ready to kill him. <laughs> teamwork, teamwork is where it's at. So they're all like banging in on the door, you know, they're hitting and stuff and all that. And he's like, and the butcher's like, we need the cleavers. And of course the, the mother of the two children is like, yeah, we'll just chop them all off and kill them all. And uh, the butcher gets like very serious. And he's like, if you touch like one hair on my daughter, like I will just, like slaughter you just like cut you to pieces and just like no regret or like just murder you and the husband's like yeah that makes sense 
That's fair. That's a good point. We should do that. But they go get the cleavers. <laughs> and Louison and Julie know that their their time is short. They don't know what to do. So they run into the bathroom and Louison starts like turning on like all these water faucets. He like takes off some of his clothes and you think like, oh, is this gonna be like a, a sexy scene? Which is kind of how like, he's like, he's like, he's like, there's one thing we gotta do now. Or like there's one thing that we must do. And he like takes off his clothes, he takes off her clothes. Julie's like, oh, no, okay. Well, okay, this is this is what's happening. But really, he's just trying to stuff all the openings in the bathroom with clothes. And he turns on all the faucets, he's breaking pipes, water starts filling the room. You don't really know like why he's filling it with water as of yet. It's not clear at the moment, but the people they're breaking through. Of course, as they're breaking through, the water gets higher and higher. You know, it gets up to like their, you know, chest, and then like they're, they're swimming in the water. Yeah, almost to the roof. Yeah, the roof. You see, like below them, like the water is like dripping, right? So like there's like a water leak or something. And the group breaks into the room and they open the door. Yeah. <laughs> and water rushes out, and they're all just kind of like pushed out into the hallway. It's a big, giant, like huge thing of water. Just yeah, gushes out, and it just washes them all the way all the way like down the stairs and stuff and and it's very impressive because like we talked about like the apartment complex is a very cool set but then they destroy it they like they it really does look like they really like kind of destroyed the structure and the the water coming in and when it washes everyone away it looks really real too it really does look like uh uh that it happened <laughs> and like it injures a bunch of people it even like i think like kills some people like everybody's like completely like they're messed up like they're done like they're 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 incapacitated except for the butcher he's coming back he's coming back for them and while this is happening the woman that was captured in the troglodytes she has wandered her way back up into the apartment complex and she has also found one of the clowns oh, oh it's a louison's uh, boomerang the australian as he called which is like it's a boomerang but it has like a knife on it i think so yeah and so she she had found it and she gets back into the complex and louison's trying to like they're trying to escape and of course like the moment they step onto the floor it just like crumbles so louise they pull right. it onto a toilet and that part that part's crazy that that once again it, it just looks pretty real like the way he's like holding onto the toilet yeah it's it's pretty like it's intense it's very i don't know great set design obviously and so the butcher, uh, I believe the mother of the two kids and um, the other woman are down there. And the butcher's like, I'm going to kill you. And the woman's like, oh, look, I got this, you know, fucking boomerang thing. And he takes it Here you go. <laughs> and yeah. he throws it and it gets like an inch from him. And then it like turns around <laughs> and hits him and just like hits him right in the head. Yeah, <laughs> it's like sticking out of his head and he does like the movie thing where he's like, I have like a thing in my head and then he just heals over <laughs> he just dies and uh yeah you get like the ending scene because of course our antagonist has been defeated I forgot to mention we forgot to mention another really quick character the weird like he doesn't really have like much of a bearing on the plot but you have like that one weird guy who has like a bunch of frogs who like lives frog guy yeah He's, he's like, he like lives like in the basement and it's like flooded, like kind of partly flooded and they're like snails and frogs everywhere, like real snails and frogs. He's like a frog guy and he has like music blaring too while he's in there. Like it really doesn't have like a big like bearing on the plot, but it's another like weird kind of tenant that is, is worth mentioning because it's very, very funny. And also like when you go, when they go down into his apartment, everything is like green, <laughs> like the, like it goes from like yellow to green. It's, 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 uh, it's very good. Uh, that, that character is just silly and weird and a lot of fun. <laughs> but you get the final scene where the kids will go onto the roof and they pretend to play instruments because over on the side, you have Louise Zahn and Julie and they're playing piece, they're playing music together. Like earlier in the movie, um, on the roof of the apartment building. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's not really any, like, there's not a lot of like conclusion to any loose ends. You know what I mean? Like, no, there's no, like, uh, is the world going to be a better place now? Like, were they able to do, no, it's just kind of like he, Louis on like escaped getting killed and that was it, you know? Yep. They play some music. The fog kind of lets up. You see like the first like blue sky yeah. and you're like, Oh, could be better. But again, there's no sort of like, you know, here's uh, here's all of the things that have happened. Here's let's type all the world loose ends, which I love. It's just like yeah, I'm fine with that. They're happy. The guy's dead. In the movie, like just end it. You don't need you don't need another thirty minutes of shit happening. Like just it's over. 
and that's good enough. Austin, a final thought, score. From the moment I turned on this movie, it was very clear because I had seen Amelie, but I had not seen any of his other films before. I know a lot about The City of Lost Children because one of my film professors, that was like one of his favorite films. So he talked about it a lot and I'd seen a lot of scenes from that film. So I know a lot about the director and the director has a very distinct style and like five minutes in, you're like, oh yeah. Like you can tell, like even if like it's not a director you particularly like, it's similar to Wes Anderson in the sense that if you watch a Wes Anderson film, you know that's a Wes Anderson film. The same thing with this director, like five minutes in, he just has such a particular style, such a particular way of making films, whether you like it or not. And it's just, I think, you know, all the more to someone who has such a distinct style and just, you know, can make a movie that looks like that. And while all these movies sure look sort of similar, it is like his style. It's kind of just the way his films are. And so, you know, once you kind of get into that world, it's fun. It's interesting. The characters are a lot of fun. I love the sound design of the film. It just has an incredible sound design, a lot of great music in the film. Everyone in the film, like no one in the film looks beautiful, really. Like all of them kind of look weird or odd. And I guess just not your traditional sense of beautiful. It's incredible set designs. I love the costuming. Everything is like this yellow or you know, green or just like these kind of weird colors going on. There's this fog that's there for no reason at all. The mailman is awesome. For some reason, he reminds me a lot of uh, Steve Martin's character in Little Shop of Horrors. But it's it's fun. It's enjoyable. I love the idea of Luzon being a, a clown. I think there's just something so... Yeah, it's so random. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> but, but at the same time, like something, maybe it's because of like Walter Keaton or Tony Chapman, there's something very cinematic about a clown. Yeah. All of the stunts are really cool. There's like a couple of things that maybe didn't age like perfectly because there's like some early uses of CGI because this came out in like 1990, 1991, 92. So it is like earlier CGI. So there's like a couple of like fast moments that are a little wonky, but it's never like anything that yeah. ever takes you out. So overall, I'm going to give this film a six out of 10. And I don't have a real good reason for not giving it a higher score. Like there's nothing about it that I think is bad necessarily i just i don't know i respect his style i guess i'm just not and i respect like how you know stylistic and like how willing the directors are to kind of just make that sort of style but to me maybe it just and it's supposed to feel a little like off putting a little weird but i don't know i guess i just didn't really get into it in a way that i'd say have with some other films but still a very enjoyable experience I really, really like it. It's very, very good. I will say I didn't get like a ton out of it on a rewatch. You know, I got, you know, about the same um, out of it uh, watching the second time. Um, but yeah, just, you know, great style. Love the set of like the apartment building. Love the idea of like, you know, of like this apartment building in post-apocalyptic France. I think that's really creative and really neat. And I think it's sold really well. You know, the cast is, you know, it's perfectly cast. Um, and it's, it's quite funny. It's legitimately funny, um, in every kind of way. Um, yeah, it's just like a really great, really entertaining movie, um, that just like combines a lot of different elements, but is also extremely unique, um, in, in many different ways. So yeah, it's just solid movie through and through, um, definitely a real, definitely a must watch. Very unique. I'll give it a seven out of 10. Very good. All right, y'all. Thank you for listening. You can find everything we do here on the podcast, anywhere you find your podcast, also on YouTube at With Nothing to Say Pod and our letterbox at With Nothing to Say Pod. You can find anything I do at Austin Lugo 1 2. You can find me on Twitter at ADHarp24. You can also find me on Letterboxd at Retro Andrew. That's R E T R 0 Andrew. I log movies on there and occasionally I write a review. So add me on there, please, if you'd like. And this month, we're going to do Christmas movies. Christmas. Go Christmas. It's going to be a good time, I suppose. But we're watching a, a movie that we, both of us, haven't watched before um, called Christmas Evil. It appears to be a slasher movie. That's going to, I think it's going to be a fun time. And thank you again for everyone who listened. Thank you, Shannon. You are the best editor anyone could ever ask for. And thank you all for listening. Thanks. Thanks.